Hello my friends. Temporarily, we are going to move away from the farms of the United States of America. Today, we're going to some of Africa's vast farmlands to see how the continent's farmers raise millions of animals. According to a report by the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, by 2022, 1.46 billion acres of land would have been used in Africa for agricultural production, and 47% of that is permanent pasture, used for grazing livestock and maintaining ecological balance. Like agriculture in other continents such as Australia or the Americas, livestock and meat production are amongst the most profitable agricultural products for farmers in Africa. In addition, Africa's agriculture is also negatively impacted by wild animals such as elephants, baboons, warthogs and wild birds. We are currently located in the north of Nigeria which is said to have the most goat and sheep farms in Africa. Every morning, hundreds of goats here will come out of the barn and they are herded by farmers to pastures near the farm to graze. Unlike goats raised in Australia or the United States, farmers in Africa often just graze their goats in the pastures right next to their farm instead of taking long trips to other distant lands. This makes it easier for them to control their herd and avoid predators that are very common here, such as hyenas, leopards or African wild dogs. It is estimated that by 2022, in Nigeria, there will be 1.3 million active livestock farms and goats are said to be the largest livestock species in the country with about 37 million heads, accounting for 23% of the total population of goats raised in Africa. Currently, most goats raised in Africa is for the purpose of meat production. Due to rather outdated livestock technology, the number of goats raised for milk production in this continent accounts for only 27%. Farmers don't only graze herds in the grasslands, they also often combine planting and harvesting hay for food storage, and this is only done by the yard farmer, who owns small farms that are usually just run by one family. In northern Nigeria, there are also a large number of large-scale goat and sheep farms with an estimated 500 to 700 individuals sold each year. What is special is that most of these large-scale farms use a large part of capital provided by traders from China. In addition to Nigeria, Ethiopia is also a country with a large number of goats grazing in Africa. Currently, the number of goats being raised in Ethiopia is close to 30 million, and more than half of them are raised on farms in north and the center of the country. In Ethiopia, farmers often graze millions of goats in highlands with mostly mountainous terrain. Due to the rather dangerous terrain of raising goats, most of the goats here wear bells around their necks to prevent them from straying from the herd. This is a small-scale goat and sheep farm in southern Ethiopia. These model farms account for 93% of the number of farms in African countries. When the heavy sunlight gradually ends, the farmers here herd their livestock back into the barn to rest and avoid predators at night. A check on the number of livestock in the herd is also carried out each day to ensure that no goats or sheep are lost. When the goats or sheep are eligible for release, 
Most of them are taken by farmers to livestock markets to be sold or slaughtered on the spot. In African countries, the trade of farm animals often takes place in small markets in small numbers. Customers here often buy goats or sheep for the purpose of developing a new farm or increasing the number of animals available in their herd. The export of hundreds of sheep or goats usually takes place only on large-scale farms with budgets invested by investors from Asia or France. When it comes to African agriculture, one animal that we cannot ignore is the baboon. Although baboons are not farmed by farmers, in Africa, baboons impress farmers with the negative impact that they have on agriculture. Herds of baboons with dozens of members have a habit of attacking agricultural fields in areas where their habitat has been invaded by humans. In addition, adult baboons often capture and eat animals raised by farmers, such as baby goats, lambs, or poultry. This is a herd of helmeted guinea fowl, which together with quelas, helmeted guinea fowl are considered to be one of the most harmful animals to agriculture in Africa. Like the millions of parrots in Australia, flocks of helmeted guinea fowl like to forage in fields and their preferred food is nuts. It is estimated that there are no less than 47 million helmeted guinea fowl currently living in Africa, and most of them are distributed in a few countries such as Kenya, Tanzania, and Botswana. Currently, most agricultural farming is not very modern with their use of small fields. Therefore, the fact that flocks of wild birds appear when the sowing process has just been completed or when the harvest season is about to take place, this causes significant losses to farmers' crops. Like wild guinea pigs in the United States, helmeted guinea fowl are also particularly fond of feeding on corn, sorghum, and vegetable fields. To protect their crops from wild birds, farmers in Africa often apply manual measures such as chasing or trapping. However, the number of helmeted guinea fowl that are exterminated by humans each year on the continent accounts for only 2% of the total population. The majority of the helmeted guinea fowl that disappear each year in Africa can be contributed to the impact of predators. What is your impression when it comes to agriculture in Africa? Let us know what you think in the comments section of this video. Hello my friends, today we will continue to visit a few farms in the United States to see how the process of harvesting thousands of tons of vegetables and fruits happens. However, before we look at how farmers harvest thousands of tons of fruit and vegetables, let's take a look at an overview of US agriculture in recent years. As expected, approximately 898 million acres of land in the United States will be used for agriculture in 2023, down nearly 2% from the previous year. As of February 2023, there are approximately 2.03 million active farms in the United States, with an average farm size of 447 acres. The record number of farms in the United States was recorded in 1935, with 6.8 million farms. According to USDA estimates, US agricultural revenue in 2023 could reach $543 billion, a 50-year record high. Of course, this is just an estimate. And whether or not US agriculture will reach this level of revenue depends on many factors that will happen in the remaining months of 2023. Currently, 
there are about 2.1 million people working in agriculture in the United States. Of these, 67% of farm workers are illegal immigrants. Tens of thousands of migrant workers in the United States are mainly engaged in jobs such as planting, harvesting, or packing crops. Throughout the history of American agriculture, migrant workers have always played a vital role in the food supply chain. This is a spinach harvest taking place in a field in the San Joaquin Valley in central California. Here, dozens of workers will cut spinach and bundle it into small bundles. In 2022, in California, 39,957 acres of farmland were used to grow spinach, accounting for 71% of the area growing this vegetable in the country. Basically, the spinach harvest is done in the same way as harvesting thousands of pounds of cilantro in California. Today, most of California's cilantro is grown in fields that run along the south coast. Coriander growing area in the state is about 8,400 acres, accounting for 29.1% of the country's cilantro growing area. According to USDA reports, in 2022, the total value of spinach and cilantro sold by US farmers is $388 million. And the production of these two vegetables generates approximately 24,700 permanent jobs each year. This is also the process of harvesting a vegetable in California. Do you know what kind of vegetable this is? Let us know your answer in the comments section of the video. We are currently in a potato field in Tudor Lake City, northeastern California. After the potatoes are dug out of the ground, the workers quickly pick them up and fill them in bags before loading them onto trucks. Even though California only produces about 9% of US potato production, the number of people working the potato fields in this state is much larger than of other potato growing states. The reason for this is that potato producing states like Idaho or Wisconsin mainly use machines in farming and harvesting instead of taking advantage of cheap immigrant labor. This is 113 acre Brussels sprouts farm in the Salinas Valley, the most productive agricultural region in California. When the harvest season comes, dozens of workers from Mexico will cut the Brussels sprouts and toss them on this machine. Next, the sprouts will be separated from the stem and sent to the factory to be washed before packing. By 2022, in California, 6,887 acres of farmland will be used to grow Brussels sprouts, accounting for almost 100% of the area growing this vegetable in the country. Each year, Brussels sprout farmers in the United States earn about 140 million to 145 million from the sale of this vegetable. These migrant workers are picking thousands of bell peppers on a farm in Hendry County, southwest Florida. March to June each year is usually the time when thousands of migrant workers flock to the bell pepper fields in California to work. Eligible bell peppers are hand-picked and poured into plastic trays before being shipped to the factory for washing and packaging. Currently, about 13,300 acres of farmland in Florida are used to grow bell peppers. In 2022, bell pepper farms in Florida harvested about 325 million pounds of peppers, generating $328 million in sales and creating approximately 9,700 regular jobs. 
This is the process of harvesting tomatoes on a farm adjacent to a bell pepper farm in Hendry County, Florida. There are 74 workers here and they are mainly from Guatemala. We are currently in a celery field in San Benedito County, Central California. Workers from Mexico are cutting thousands of pounds of celery and packaging it in the field before shipping it to farmers markets. Currently, about 22,300 acres of farmland in California is used to produce celery. And like strawberries, celery harvest in the state occurs nearly year round. For the past 10 years or so, the California celery industry has consistently brought in revenue of 310 to 315 million dollars. According to a USDA report, each year about 6,800 migrant workers come to California to work on celery farms and the average income they receive per hour of labor is about $9. In addition to celery, lettuce is also one of the most commonly grown vegetables in California. Today, lettuce is grown in the state around three and a half times as much as celery. Each year, California's lettuce fields welcome about 24,000 migrant workers.